This week's blog is about the rare pitcher's thistle plant that one of our conservation scientists is trying to reestablish on Montrose Beach. Hi, I'm Julie McCaffrey from the Chicago Botanic Garden, and we're here at Montrose Beach. I'm here with Jeremy Fant. And what are we studying here? Uh, we're looking at a plant called Circium pitcheri. It's a rare plant um, that's federally listed as endangered throughout um, the Lake Michigan area. It occurs in the small habitat that occurs along between the lake and the lands. Uh, it's a sandy habitat which is very narrow and thin and a lot of it's been lost due to rec recreation and land usage. Um, this plant has become extinct in Illinois due to uh, much of the beach development along the shores but now there are some habitats which are protected and so we're trying to return the plant to, it, to these habitats. Um, so how is pitcher's thistle different from the thistle you see growing on the side of the road? Uh, that's what makes thistles an interesting group. Um, they they range all the way from the invasive weed that we have in our gardens to plants like this, which are very few and sparse and rare. And so it, they're an interesting group to study to work out what makes a plant invasive versus rare. And, you know, we obviously want the, the thing in between. So um, by studying the genetics, the growth rates, and all those different questions, we can sort of get a closer look at uh, what makes a plant invasive versus rare. So if we touch it, it's not as prickly as the... No, you'll the find weed. it's a much softer. The wooliness on the leaf is, is there to help it um, during the hot, dry summer. Um, and then its spines are there, but only on the fine tips of the, the leaves. So it's not a prickly thistle. Um, it's actually smooth to touch. So, What role does this plant play in an ecosystem? Um, this plant is an interesting one in that uh, it grows only in the eroded areas of the sand dunes. So the sand, for it to properly go through its life cycle, it needs a dynamic system. Um, and, and our instinct is to stop erosion. Um, but in a sand system, you'll get blowouts where sand is eroded away. And this plant will come in and colonize that area. It will quickly take over the area and stabilize the sand and habits like that. And it's also an important part of this ecosystem. There are very few plants that can survive the extreme heat and cold of the sand dunes. It spends a lot of its juvenile stage just sending a root, tap root down um, until it hits the lake level so that it can extract the water from obviously living by the lake. Um, and then once it's got, a, it got to the lake, it can persist for a number of years. It grows big, once it grows big enough, it'll send up a large flowering stem um, with multiple flower heads on it. And then it's pollinated and seeds set. If the goldfinches don't eat all the seeds, disperse throughout the... Is this plant dead? This plant has gone through its life cycle, so it's, it's just flowered this year. Um, it's not as big as previous years because this is a new restoration. Normally a plant will be much larger. But it produced five flowers, um, and then if we look at the, the flower heads, oops, you can see, hopefully, there's some seeds in here. You can see how large some of these seeds are. They're kind of big, um, good food for, th for goldfinches, um, but also helps it survive the, the germination cycle long enough until its roots can get its own water. So, so this it, is a good sign? It's a good sign that things are happening here and that you know, hopefully this plant will persist in this, in this area. So. Great. so how will the Plant Science Center help you with your research? Um, it gives me access to more students and more volunteers who are going to help me do all the nitty-gritty work that needs to be done, the counting of seeds, the weighing of seeds, ex extracting of DNA. Um, there's a lot of numbers that need to be crunched, and to do that we need, we need to extract a, not, a lot of DNA from a lot of plants. 